There you go. There we All are. right. So now we're being recorded. So uh, there we are. So yeah, I I was actually we were going to start like next week and not this, but now Cindy and I have moved a vacation to uh, later in October. We're going to leave uh, here on our anniversary and go down to see Josh and Lizzie on their anniversary. And so, uh, but that's that's later in October, and I'll miss either one or two Sundays then. And the other big news is it looks like uh, it looks like they're going to put me back in the saddle again. Oh, <laughs> oh, really? Where is this going to be, Paul? Oh, uh, I, I'm really not at liberty to say now. Um, now, that, but uh, I will. In Massachusetts. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, oh, okay. It's it, it's within a. Uh, Within an hour's drive of mass of of our home, let's put it that oh. way. But I'll 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 there more to more news to be uh, disclosed at the <laughs> what appropriate does he time. Say about it? But very part time. It's very part time. And now it looks nice. like Nana and Nana's iPad has joined us. Yeah. Hello, Nana. At least the top oh. of her head. <laughs> good to see always good to see nana good to see you <laughs> so um i know sherry said something about joining us but we ought to get started at some point i'm going to wait for yeah. scott to come back and then um and then we can get started and uh and um i i prepared just something very brief uh for today um but you'll uh yeah well i, I just something for us to think about is a uh, tuesday was holy cross day and it it just seemed right to me uh, to spend a little time on on the way of the cross so uh, so if uh, why don't we get started and then if sherry uh, joins us that'll be good and uh, and let me get let me get uh, started here we go debbie said she might join us today too all right, so here we are, and we start. Well, Godspell, live from Lynn. This is Godspell. Hello, I'm Father Paul Bresnahan, priest of the Episcopal Church, and today I am joined by some of my friends on Facebook Live. Hello out there in Facebook world, and uh, Zoom. Welcome back to Godspell, a time... Uh, to spell it out. Who is God and how is God involved in our lives? God's spell is an old English word for the gospel, the language of God, the good news of Jesus Christ. So Holy Cross Day was uh, September the 14th of this week, this past week, and I thought that um, given the, the way of the cross, it might be, it might be uh, appropriate for us to give some thought and reflection and prayer um, to uh, the meaning of the cross in our lives. <clears throat> Take a moment of silence now to remember God's presence with us. This is a painting by Salvador Dali called The Christ of John of the Cross. And when I, when I first saw this in, um, in the national, uh, I, I, saw, I saw this particular painting when it was on tour in the, in the National Gallery in Washington. Um, I was just taken away because I'd never seen anything like it. I had never seen Christ uh, portrayed in such a contemporary way. To me, this made Jesus look... Uh, real 
in a way that I'd never seen him look real before. And with that, let's now take a moment of silence to remember Christ present, crucified, and risen again. A statement of belief, which you're familiar with now. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though anxious of heart, today I I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe. And though you be silent now, today I believe. Um, there are a number of colics for Holy Cross Day, but this colic, is one that speaks to my heart. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, May bring those who do not know you to the way of love, for the knowledge and love of the way of love, in the honor of your name. Amen. That particular cross I found when I was in, when Cindy and I were, were in Ireland in uh, 2009, and it's just a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, lovingly carved by some folk on the west coast of Ireland. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to read to you some of St. Paul's thoughts on the cross. This is from uh, his letter to the Christians in Philippi. And Paul says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, this uh, this uh, cross and candle I, did, I found in a little gift shop in Cleveland <laughs> when I was at Epiphany Church uh, in, in Euclid. And uh, we always said our prayers for the children, told stories while that candle was burning. And to this day, I keep it uh, on my desk as a reminder of the presence of God in, um, in my life. 
Now, there are two images uh, that I'm going to share with you that have been used uh, popularly in the church. One is the image of Christ the crucified. This is this particular cross is from um, um, St. Peter's Cathedral in uh, Helena, Montana. And uh, it's a beautiful piece of carving and shows Christ dying on the cross. And it's, it's probably uh, the more familiar crucifix to us than the other one is that I'm going to show you now. This is the Christus Rex, the risen Christ, the risen King. This uh, beautiful hand-carved uh, representation of the risen Christ is in the chapel at uh, the Church of the Epiphany in Euclid, Ohio. And I used to say the Eucharist here every single Sunday. And every Sunday when I looked at this, um, when I looked at this cross, I saw the risen Christ in glory and the power of Jesus over sin and death. And it made the, uh, it seemed to fill the chapel with a faith that is different, a kind of spirituality that is different than the kind that you see in this cross, in the crucifix, Christ dying, Christ in glory, risen as king. So let's have some time for conversation. So first of all, <laughs> we probably want to do some uh, catch up uh, time. Uh, how have things been since we last met? Your summer, uh, your life, what's going on? What's been going on? Let's have an update from each other. Um, uh, a little bit on what we've been up to. Uh, second question would be, what symbol or metaphor comes to mind as you think of the cross? Uh, the love of Christ? The humility and obedience of Jesus, his suffering, or his resurrection and glory. And thirdly, where do you see yourself in the experience of the cross? Those uh, three questions uh, should be enough for a little time together. Uh, and this, by the way, these crosses uh, come to us from uh, a, uh, a settlement called Clonmacnois in Ireland. Um, this was a settlement of monks and uh, a community of Christians from the uh, early Irish church. And it was at the, uh, at the uh, meeting place of the east-west passageway between Dublin and Galway and the northwest, the north-south channel uh, described by the Shannon River. And because of its location there from the east-west um, uh, passageway, highway, let's shall we say, from the uh, er early you know, seven, eight hundreds and the Shannon, um, this was an important strategic place to hold. And it was destroyed many times. And each time, uh, it was destroyed. The, the monks rebuilt it. So let's take a little time for some conversation. Uh, how do I, oh yeah, there. I need to stop the screen sharing and bring us back. So there we are back again. So, so there we are. First of all, what, what, let's, let's bring each other up to date a little bit. What have we been up to? I guess I can start. Um, Cindy and I have been busy this summer with um, dealing with some 
some pretty heavy duty sickness among friends and, and family. And uh, as uh, you may know, Phil, my buddy, uh, Phil, who joins us uh, a lot, his partner was very, very uh, sick during the summer. And so I spent a lot of time with Phil. In fact, one of the one of the times we were together, I had to cancel it or leave it because of an emergency. We had to rush him into um, uh, uh, the um, Brigham and Women's Hospital here in Boston. Um, so, um, so we've been busy with that. Cindy's a very best friend's husband, also a uh, very serious surgery too. So we've been busy with all that stuff. Um, We've also just taken some time because of that busyness, just just to just to enjoy reading and and being being together and downtime, uh, day trips um, and all of that sort of thing. And then, of course, uh, just a few uh, uh, few days ago, or a week ago, or two weeks, maybe Nancy came by to visit us on 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 the on the way of her trip to uh, Prince Edward Island. So that's what we've been uh, going on. That's what we've been up to this summer. So what about you guys? What have you been up to? Bring me up to date. What have you do? What do you do? Well, I just, uh, besides going to on my trip, I would, we also, our family got together, our immediate, the siblings and, and, nieces and nephews so we had christmas in july and that was fun it's the first time i'd seen my brother since he was diagnosed with the esophageal cancer yeah and thankfully the treatments have done well and he's going to have cancer uh, he's going to have surgery uh he said the downside is he'll lose half the stomach i said bariatric surgery without asking for it without the need to lose weight <laughs> i know what <laughs> but, that's like yeah, I know. That's why I, that's why I'm not worried about it. I you look perfectly fine with yeah, yeah, very exactly. little stomach. So, um, but we are thankful to God for seeing us through this far and and getting him that far. So, yep. Yeah, Aren't we do. Beautiful. So, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you. It was what a, a wonderful Christmas. Christmas present that is. Yeah. <coughs> we. Ann and I am now in West Virginia. We Welcome moved. back home to oh, yes. God, Virginia. <clears throat> We're back here after being down. We've been down in, in the in Vienna, Virginia since May 27th, uh, 19, 2000. And I fortunately, thank God, got through the stroke because I got to the hospital well, but I had great treatment, but a lot of, and I had some other surgery I had to have. Yeah. And my oldest daughter and her family were very helpful to me while I was there. Uh, we, again, with the pandemic going on and everything else, so uh, that was good. But we finally moved up here about a month ago, mm. and we're a process, process of adjusting here. Yeah, but it's, it's you know, the personal side, um, I, I can't get up to Massachusetts as I would want to. My brother is doing well, even though he's fighting pancreatic cancer, he's still working. Yeah, God bless yeah. him. And that didn't attitude. you say he took the train cross country? Yeah, to Portland, Oregon, to the wife of, I mean, the wedding of one of our nieces, Jeez. who's a doctor. Jeez. <laughs> and he, he, <laughs> He, he had a sleeper all the way because one of the women she, he works with made sure he had a sleeper all the way. Yeah, yeah. The ticket office. And uh, so he, he's doing well. And he's, he's an example to me of rising up. <clears throat> he's, and I was reading the other, well, I'll get into the next step you wanted, but uh, the, when you talk about the cross and you talk about resurrection, um, I know it's one of the pieces that uh, uh, in one of the spiritual writers that you know, uh, I'm having a senior moment now, but he said toward the end of one of his books on uh, now and then, now and here and here and now, uh, befriend death, mm -hmm. befriend it. Mm -hmm. and, and 
I think of the resurrection. I think of the cross, but I also think of the resurrection, because in order to befriend death, if you got to you got to put the poles together. Yeah. And I, I think of his and he inspires me with his attitude. He loves yeah. working. He's keeping working. He's had appointments at Dana Farber last week and with his own doctor, and he's got some other things. But he's not having any treatment. But he's he's you know he's tired at the end of work, but he's an example. And so I, that, that's been a tying in with your theme, with what, you're, what we're talking about today. But I try to and, and please keep him in your prayers and, and also. Uh, How Anne. old is he, Fred? He's eighty-three. Eighty-three, and he's still working. He's the with oldest full-time employee of Amtrak. <laughs> <laughs> he's known up and down the East Coast. <laughs> uh, I know what well, Cindy and I when we took uh, when we took the Acela one time. Uh, he had he took our ticket from us and at that time. Yeah. Being very and, official. And sister is is fading cancer down in North Carolina. She's yeah. stable now, but she's getting weaker. So mm -hmm. we keep her in the prayers. But we there are a lot of things going on. And plus at, at my age, I'm saying goodbye to people I taught that I didn't expect to. And I'm grateful for being able to be with them. And so that's 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 another uh, yeah, difficult yeah. thing too. To very fine young men, but I don't think of them young. They're 10, 15 years younger than I am. And so it's, it's, it's it's one of those things. Okay, your voice is fading, Fred. You try to look at things positively, and at yeah. this point, especially in my life. So. Okay. I didn't mean to take so much time, on, on the, but that's a, a sort of weaving the together with what you brought up. Beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. It, that's a good point about the interplay between uh, the way of suffering and the way of resurrection. Yeah. Anybody else? What's going on? What's been going on? Well, I, go, ahead. go ahead, Sister Sheila. Well, as I mentioned, this has been a time of transition for us. We decided in early April that we really needed to get out of our home. Um, we had lived there for over 50 years. And the it was becoming too much to take care of and especially for the the yard and the gardens and my husband was very he was frustrated because he's was physically unable to plant a garden this year for the first time in years uh, he has a heart condition and so he couldn't handle that anymore and so we finally decided that the best thing to do was the downsize which has been <laughs> an ongoing proposition for months, but um, we very luckily found a good law, uh, realtor who found us this condo. We, we never even heard of this particular condo group, but which was only four and a half miles from where we were living, but uh, found this lovely three bedroom condo and my, oh, my yeah. husband says the best feature is it has a two-car garage. <laughs> really? Wow. That for to the storage space and all is just amazing. So wonderful. We uh, made the decision and bought the condo and moved before we actually sold our home because there's just so much stuff in the house. I said, I just can't deal with this. So we moved out and got the house. Uh, cleared out and put it on the market and sold it in three days. Wow. And uh, we will be making the final settlement on that will be at the end of this month. But we've been in the condo now for a month and we finally got rid of the last box. <laughs> so <laughs> we're making progress. We're great. I want to compliment you because, you know, in my pastoral experience, there are so many people that delayed that or did not or or just didn't make that transition uh, and couldn't really deal with letting go of all that stuff in a big house and all that 
and and by the time uh, the decision was made, it was made for them. And uh, you're you're making the decision wisely, wow. uh, and, and you can embrace the decision. We should have made it five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it better late than never. Right, but we did do it, and yeah, it it is a good place to be, and we're still living in the same locality, so we can yeah do it. And so I, but the weird thing you mentioned earlier was we moved, and we have so many people who are part of the Autumn Carter Fellowship who have not only moved, but are moving long distances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started the fellowship where most of us were here in Delaware, and suddenly there's only going to be a very few of us left in Delaware. It's right, very strange. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that seems unusual that all of that we, you, most of the people who began that fellowship in Delaware are now scattering to the four winds. It's yep. interesting. Yeah. Well, congratulations again. <laughs> Abbot John, you said uh, that you, you were starting to say something. Yeah. Well, um, as I think all of you know, or maybe don't, uh, in June, I was installed as the abbot of the Anna Care Fellowship. And uh, we had our gathering virtually on Zoom. This is the second year in a row. We're praying that next year we'll be able to be together. In there person. Are, there are a number of challenges, but with the help of my brothers and sisters and, and Father Paul, who's our Anam Kara to the community, we made it through the, the chapter meetings, which is our business meeting, and through gathering, and we're moving forward. But uh, I'm slowly settling into what it means to be abbot. It's dawning on me a little bit at a time. And <laughs> the work that's involved with it, it's, it's one person told me that it sounds like it's comparable to, to being the rector of a congregation without the, the uh, liturgy portion of it. And yeah, to yeah. an extent, I think some of that's true. There's 92 of us in the fellowship at this point. 92, did you say? Yeah, uh, including seekers and companions and yeah. aspirants and novices and professed. Yeah. It's, I think it's the fastest growing uh, order of its kind in the Episcopal Church, isn't it? Uh, that's what I've heard. Uh, that's, that's but it's... Amazing. it's Definitely through help of others, especially Sister Sheila, who's been working to keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> she very kindly says, uh, you might want to think about adding this to the agenda for that. <laughs> well, so. I've been, been with it for almost from the beginning. I was in the first group of novices. Right. So I've been professed for since 2006. It's always good, Sister Sheila. It's always good to have somebody like you around. Yeah, who because, remembers everything. <laughs> I, li I like people, detail people, who can uh, remind me, because I'm, I'm always looking at forests without seeing and, any trees. And know? Sister Sheila is wonderful as an editor looking at what I've written. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Well, so, uh, but we're moving it's along. It's a ministry. With... That's my part of the ministry. And it I, sure is. And I'm... It's a good deaction. I feel called to do it, and so I'm happy to do it. Thank you. And so we've, we've moved along. Uh, this summer we had, I'm part of the St. Andrew's Society, uh, which is a uh, Scottish society, benevolence. It's the oldest benevolent society in the state of Michigan. Oh. And uh, we just uh, had our 172nd Highland Games. It's the longest continuing Highland Games in North America. And that's the, the, the games, uh, you know, you're familiar with Caber, the telephone pole, they toss and yeah. those different things. And yeah. this is the primary way in which we raise our funds that we then use to take care of people and organizations and support in our benevolence. So we've had that. And uh, as I was telling some of you earlier, I was helping Lee 
uh, just a, a week ago Thursday, uh, take some hardware off of a sailboat that was up on its cradle and the ladder decided to go one way and I went the other way. And so I'm now recovering from strained ligaments and muscles in my ah, right leg, yeah. but I'm doing much better and getting around pretty well. And the other thing I took on this summer was at the end of, of June, June 24th, actually, I began the Noom N-O-O-M oh, uh, program. Yeah. And as of this morning, I've lost 41 pounds and 39 wow. more to go. Oh, great. Wow. Uh, it's, it's teaching you a whole new way of life. It's not about losing weight. Losing weight is a byproduct of learning how to eat properly and exercise and handle stress and motivation. It's, it's behavioral modification, but it's pretty comprehensive really program. Yeah. yeah. It's worked real well for me. So that's what that's what I used. Yeah. Wonderful. That's where I, that's where I lost my weight. Good. Were Wonderful. You able to keep it off. Um, all but about 10 pounds I put 10, 15 I put back on during COVID. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's that's great. But yeah, I love it. I, as a librarian, I liked it because it had credible articles and you know all this right citations of what they were putting on there. Yeah, behind everything, they give you all the science that mm. that helps you understand why you're doing what you're doing. And uh, so, with that, uh, that's kind of we've. Other than that, we've been pretty much staying in the house and you know staying isolated yeah yeah we pretty much have to that's our default position pretty much yeah okay who else wants to bring us up to date what's going on nothing not nothing much. <laughs> nothing much huh all right same old same old same I'm old working, same old. taking care of Doing everything, whatever needs done. Yep. We have convention this weekend. Oh. And we are electing the new Bishop Cojuder. Oh, the, oh, this is the weekend you're electing a new bishop? This coming. This coming weekend. Oh, this coming weekend. Which diocese is this? West Virginia. Ah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Virtual, of course. Oh, yes. Everything. Oh, ver yeah, it has well, to be in West Virginia. My God, the numbers in West Virginia have become really bad. No. Last state to get it and bad numbers. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, out of the box, God, Jim Justice said you guys were really doing well with the vaccines. And then all of a sudden, everybody, nobody wanted them after that. I it's think that the younger people. Yeah. Say under 50? Yeah, it's crazy. Only 40% have been vaccinated. Only 40%. And I wrote down what Dan did to the store. I stayed in the car. And she had a mask on. I counted six people with masks on going into Martin's. And 25 people coming out that didn't have it going in or going out. Yeah, yeah that's so crazy. It, it's, 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 and they're all agents. Yeah, given the given the preponderance of the of the virus, it's it's like so we're number one in the country in terms of percentage. Yeah, per uh, hundred thousand. Right yeah, now, per, yeah, per hundred thousand, yeah. you guys are so, right up there. Like, you in Tennessee, Tennessee's the other one that's bad. Yes, right behind us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had to alter some things that we were going to do. Yep. Sure. Even when we're vaccinated, <laughs> we know that it's it's. You have to take you, you that, gotta take that's the your, image. Because yeah. there are breakthrough infections, so you gotta yeah. be careful. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? Uh, <laughs> uh, we had our garden this summer. Oh good. And we have uh what's it like twenty-two pounds of tomatoes in the freezer. Mm. So we have to process that with spaghetti sauce. Um, Scott, I wish I was closer. I love nothing I love better than a fresh tomato. Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it, it was a good crop this year. Very good. Wow. And what else? Been working on a 
a CD. Mm. Been recording that that five songs already, so wow. and doing all that. So that's about it. Yeah, you know, just trying to stay busy. Good. Good to see you again. It's good to see everyone. Missed you. Missed you. Missed everybody. Any Kogler? Anything else going on in your life these days? Um, I I started hiking a lot. I really hike an awful lot now. Yeah. A few times a week. There's a park here called Jacobsburg, and I found it to be really spiritual. So Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. Um, I too have been dieting, but I'm doing Weight Watchers. I had Mm -hmm. Zoom and Weight Watchers at the same time, and wanted to see which one would work out better for me. And so it was Weight Watchers. And I'm, um, yeah, I've lost about 20 pounds. Good for you. Uh, Good for you. A very dear friend of ours died over the summer. Um, She's also a Sunday school teacher. Uh, Yeah, I mean, she was, she was in her 70s, I guess. But we think she was sick for a while. One day Mm -hmm. she went to the hospital. They found a mass in her abdomen and she was dead like within a week. Oh, God. Yeah. But really, it's a way to, I mean, it. At least she didn't like suffer too much. Yep. Yep. Well, and she's in the nearer presence. So she is. All right. All right. So um, any theological reflections on the on the cross uh, or or, uh, uh, Fred gave us a little bit of a thought on that. I mean, like what imagery comes to mind? is it the love or is it the suffering or is it the glory in the resurrection or is it that forgiveness that comes to us, the compassion of the cross? Or, um, and where do you find yourself in the story of the cross? Any, any reflections on any of that? Well, for me, the, the cross it is... is this one here, which is my profession cross. Yeah. It's quite a heavy cross. It's a silver cross and you can feel it on your chest. And what that does is help me to remember uh, when I think of of Christ uh, is the obedience that was there uh, and the trust in God that was there and and calls me to that. so that's kind of where I am with crosses right now. Wonderful, wonderful. Any other reflections? I'd like to give you mine. Mine would be that uh, that the, uh, like that colic that I said at the beginning. Jesus stretched out his arms on the hardwood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of his saving embrace. Now that that's what my whole life has been about. And and maybe maybe even to a fault. I I I I just can't help myself. I love everybody. I just can't help it. And uh, and it, there've been some kind of unlovable responses to all of that on occasion, but that's okay. I mean I survived. Here I am, and uh, you you might just say that there's in me a sense of Jesus' irrepressible ability, ability to love. So, anyway, that's where I'm at with that, this whole business. Any other reflections? I just I, uh, I've always okay. felt that you know. If you put your your problems before the cross, so to speak, it gives you the strength and guidance to figure out how to get through whatever you're going through. And I, I can tell you this summer with the move and getting rid of stuff and all the dealings with realtors and mortgages and all that kind of business stuff you have to deal with, if I didn't put it in front of the cross every day before I started to do anything, I never would have made it. Yeah. Yeah. There is a sense, isn't there, 
where Jesus stretches out his arms on the cross and put all the burdens on me. Let me carry all those burdens for you. I can do that. Or yeah. your <clears throat> sins, let me take all those on me because you're forgiven. Yeah, that kind of. Yeah, that cast your burdens upon the Lord. Yeah, that, that really makes sense in a high stress time, like yeah. when you're moving or illness or whatever. Whatever it might be. I think of people today, we, we, throughout our lives, we go through personally the meaning of the cross working with other people. If I've been in ministry in a veterans hospital for, for over 10 years and working with veterans from three different major wars, World War II, Korean War, and the Vietnam War, and being with patients, patients at different different levels of their getting better or not getting better. Yeah. And where they come through. And, and I think of people, when things are fairly normal in society, you only know that whole road to the extent that you are involved with your family, your close family or friends. But what's happening around us, so many people are going through different apps, uh, experiences of the cross, yeah. losing their home, losing their job, losing their health, and protecting themselves if they are vaccinated from not having something worse. Mm -hmm. And and so in, in, the, in the conundrum that people are, are facing in this situation, what, what better understanding we have is the meaning of the cross, and it has to be related to the resurrection. There mm -hmm. has to be hope in all yeah. what you go through. And I can think of a, a close priest friend of mine who I was with before he died. And I used to see him regularly up until the time. This is over 10 years ago. And the last time I saw him, he said, Fred, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm yeah. ready. And I, I still keep that in mind because he was a very dear friend, exemplary uh, in his what he in his priesthood in his ministry, and I try to. Everyone tries to work on that whole experience in terms of personal within your family, what's going on, and always never to lose hope. Yeah, because the cross, as terrible as it is, the cross, the terrible suffering that people have, more some than others. But they have to have hope. They have to have hope. And that's what Jesus, that you have to link the cross with, with the resurrection. And that's why the two, those two images make so much sense to me. The Christ uh, the, with the crucifix and the Christus Rex. The suffering and dying Christ, the Christ in glory and the resurrection. Those two images are... are as real to me as any. Anything else? I, I just wanted to share one other thought. <clears throat> I'm uh, a Scot and of the clan Little. And it was one of the border clans. And the motto of our clan is, the cross is the touchstone of faith. Huh. Interesting. Lovely thought. Okay. Well, we've been at it for a while. We probably ought to wrap it up unless there's anything else. Okay, then let's go back to screen sharing. And we can, we can wrap this up. Um, So let's take a uh, time now for some special intentions for uh, any of your prayers, prayers for others, prayers for yourself. Take some time in prayer. What are you doing here? Pray. 
prayer, I'd like to pray for my brother and grateful for the grace he's received so far to, to deal with his, you know, him and then Anne's sister, Joyce, who's finding him. And then another sister of mine who's gradually losing her memory and her sight at the same time. She's in a nursing home in Framingham. Um, and uh, I'm in those family members and along with Few other people that I was close to me that are dealing with. And I commend, remember Phil and Bill. Remember Buddy and Bill in need of healing. Now let us sum up all our prayers and praises in the words our Savior Christ has taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. 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 And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may the blessing of God, the most holy, undivided, everlasting Trinity be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, good to see you all again. Good, good to see you all. Everybody. All right. Take care. Next week, same see you next time, week. same station, okay? Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 I know. Bye now. Bye. I'll turn off your recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to stop Let's your recording. See you, John. Blessings. I'll see you, Paul. Talk okay. to you later. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.